Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for our final demo for Demo Days, uh, CPOA's uh, virtual uh, exhibition uh, that we're doing uh, in September, October, and November with CW Fleet. So I want to welcome you all and thanks for taking some time out of your day to um, meet with some great vendors, learn about products and services that would be a benefit to your agency and department. So. My name is Cindy Williams. I'm the Vendor Relations Manager for CPOA. And we just wanted to make sure that you stayed connected in 2020 um, as we do this major pivot across the world. We know how important it is to still source products and services for your needs, for your agency, and for the future. And also to stay abreast of what's changing and the trends that are going on with your technology partners and all of the partners out there that serve um, our public safety um, officials. So with that, I just wanted to welcome, um, uh, again, as our final presentation today, GTAC Video Solutions. And we've got on the line for you to give you a great presentation. We have Jay Newburn. Jay, welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got it. Great. So I'm excited about the opportunity to speak about our video solutions. Um, a lot of customers around California are very familiar with GTAC as a company. Uh, GTAC is based in Irvine, California and is known for making uh, rugged police and military equipment. Most customers are very familiar with our rugged tablets and computers. I'm specifically here today though to talk about our video solutions, which includes our body-worn cameras, in-car cameras, and interview room solutions, all of which is powered by GTAC Enterprise software that's ran in the cloud or on client-provided servers. So I'll just get right into it. Uh, a little overview of the GTAC video solution uh, of how we came to be. So GTAC started as a conglomerate of GE and the MyTAC Cinex Corporation. Uh, and over the years, we've launched a number of different video products, uh, in-car camera hardware back in 2005. We began GTAC Enterprise Software around the same time. Um, that's expanded to in 2015, releasing the BCO2 body camera uh, and now releasing products such as our mobile interview room kit, our BCO3 camera, which is releasing in uh, Q4, so this, this quarter of this year. Um, and we have in-car camera systems and body cameras being used by police agencies all over the world. Our major product groups for the video sides, in-car video, interview rooms, uh, body-worn cameras, we also have a real-time command center solution to allow for aggregating of Esri DAP, a map data of camera feeds from non-GTAC cameras, IP-based cameras. Um, and our solutions offer the ability for AVL, um, ALPR, case management, um, and all of our solutions being video heavy also include uh, redaction. So I'll just talk a little bit about our body-worn camera here. Uh, the GTAC body-worn camera that most agencies are familiar with is the BCO2 camera. This camera has been so popular that even though we're releasing our BCO3 camera, we uh, are carrying on the BCO2. It's just a very popular camera. The form factor is a uh, favorite by a lot of frontline officers. It's the smallest form factor 12-hour battery life camera in the industry. Um, it has some really important features, pre-event buffer, the ability to go back in time and start a recording, 30 seconds is typically what agencies do, adjustable resolution up to 1080p or, or all the way down to VGA, and that can be done by administrator from the back-end software and applied to the entire agency's cameras. Um, it's ruggedized, it's mil standard and IP67, so it's rugged and waterproof. Um, it can actually survive going underwater while recording, come out and still be operating just fine. Um, this camera also includes built-in GPS. So when reviewing footage in the cloud solution, you're able to actually see exactly where the video was recorded. If there's a foot pursuit, you actually see a GPS map of uh, dots moving across a map showing where that camera was as the video is being recorded. Uh, the last thing that's important to note about this is this camera also includes Bluetooth technology. The Bluetooth built into the BCO2 allows for automatic triggering. So we can install a simple device inside of a squad car and allow the body camera to activate based upon events at the vehicle. So some common triggers would be if the lights turn on or if the gun lock is activated, 
some departments actually have our trigger box installed so that every time the driver's door opens, the body camera starts recording. So that ensures that in those critical moments, officers aren't having to think about whether or not they hit record on the camera, it starts automatically. So the camera is lightweight, it's easy to use, it includes the ability to tag video in the field. Um, and like I said, it can respond to those automatic triggers. We also have the BCO3 body camera. You can see the form factor of this camera is a little bit larger. Um, that's to build in a lot of extra technology. So some other things this BCO3 camera can do is connect to an LTE network. So you can order a BCO3 with built-in Verizon or built-in AT&T or even FirstNet. And using that cellular backhaul, we can offload video directly from the body camera in the field. We can also live stream video for situational awareness to see what's happening in real time from the body worn camera perspective. Uh, and it gives us real time GPS. So whereas the BCO2 allows us to see a record of GPS, the BCO3 allows us to say, where is this body camera or in practice, where is this officer right now? And we see that directly based off of the GPS location on the BCO3. Just like the BCO2, it has built-in Bluetooth hands-free, so it can be triggered by those same in-vehicle events as the BCO2, uh, allowing for automatic triggers and not having to worry about officers activating cameras during critical incidents. This camera supports infield tagging, just as the BCO2 does with a turn wheel on the front. Um, so without pairing a phone or using an app or doing anything like that, uh, officers are able to categorize video directly in the field, which enables retention policies to be enforced on videos, starting from as soon as the video is created, it stopped recording, categorize it typically as like a traffic stop or an arrest directly from the body camera. And that drives the retention policy. Typically an arrest is gonna be kept for longer than a traffic stop video. Uh, both cameras use the same mounting solutions, so customers that have BCO2 can move to BCO3 and retain their mounting solutions, um, and it allows for departments to have a mixed deployment as well. So if a department wants to have BCO2 on patrol officers, but they want to have BCO3 on K9 officers and have BCO3 on SWAT or an SRT team, uh, then they can have a mixed deployment but still have some accessories that are shared. The last thing the BCO3 has that the BCO2 does not have is an extended battery pack that can clip onto the bottom. It doesn't connect with wires. It clips directly to the camera for a more secure connection. Um, and it allows for this camera to essentially be continually used during an overtime shift or something like that. Both cameras come with uh, or can be ordered with a number of accessories like fast disconnect magnetic charging cables, or as we just call it, the magnetic breakaway cable. It connects magnetically to the bottom of the body camera. So when an officer's driving around, they can be charging the camera. And if they need to bail out of the vehicle, they open the door, spill out of the car, the cable just pulls away from the body camera, stays in the vehicle. Um, it's not connecting using any type of plug. We use pogo pin style charging connectors on the bottom of our camera. So nothing's going to break off inside the camera. So it's a very rugged and simple to use charging solution that helps make sure that the cameras are always charged when they need to be. Um, there's also single docks that allow the cameras to dock. They can be installed in a vehicle. They can be connected to the DVR system. They can be connected to an MDT. They can be powered off of like a cigarette lighter plug. They can also be installed uh, on an office desk or given as like a take home charger. Uh, they're very popular with like a sheriff's office that is more likely to have officers or deputies that call in or out of service from home. Single docks are very useful for that type of deployment. We also have eight port master docks. These are smart docks. They have onboard storage and software that allows the camera to be docked and automatically offload video the video rests on the master dock and the master dock connected to the department's internet via patch cable is able to offload to the cloud. Uh, so video goes from the body camera to the master dock and then from the master dock to the cloud. Uh, architecture is a little bit different than some other places. 
Um, we allow the video to live kind of in transit on the master dock to ensure video removes itself from the body camera as fast as possible. So if somebody's just in the station writing a report, they dock their camera, they're not subject to internet speeds to get that video off the camera and move to the dock first. Uh, the body worn camera is part of our video solution. Um, one of the biggest parts of a good body camera though is how it stays on the uniform. Um, even the best camera is not very useful if it falls off in a scuffle. So we've got a number of different mounts like the chest mount or the pocket mount or probably the most popular one, the magnetic mount, which we actually have a couple of different variants of depending on the uniform um, and Molly mount as well. Um, so these mounts help ensure that whatever the uniform is, we're going to have a mounting solution that will work. One of the major benefits of a full provider um, like GTAC that makes in-car video and body-worn cameras is a lot of agencies are used to this wireless microphone on the far left here or something that looks very similar to it from their legacy in-car camera system. For departments that uh, move to GTAC video, they're able to use that BCO2 body-worn camera with their GTAC in-car camera system as the wireless mic. So they don't have to carry both the wireless mic and the body camera. The GTAC BCO2 or BCO3 works as the wireless mic for the GTAC DVR system. Uh, and interestingly, they are about the same size. The BCO2 body camera is about the same size as your traditional wireless mic. Um, so I will talk about the in-car camera system here a little bit. Our system is based off of the VRX20 platform. So the VRX20 is a ruggedized and water resistant DVR box that includes uh, built in storage. So we don't have a thumb drive that comes in and out of it as its primary storage. Its main hard drives are actually built into it. So it includes two hard drives, one of which is its standard operating system and storage. The other one is its black box recording hard drive, which is for passive recording. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. The system's designed to install in a vehicle. The DVR itself can install in a console, Gamber or Havis console, and there's face plates for it. A lot of departments will just put this in a tech tray in the back of a uh, SUV and the officers never need access to the actual DVR itself. Um, the system can be ordered as our base model with like an i3 processor, typically powering a front facing camera and a back seat camera. Our cameras, which are also GTAC manufactured, are very small, they're cube cameras. Uh, the front facing camera is always going to be an IP camera. We have customers that choose between analog or IP for the back seat camera. Um, by having that DVR powering those cameras, especially if we go IP, we don't have to worry about tagging into power somewhere in the vehicle, so it becomes a more reliable uh, camera system. Uh, and everything is controlled by our five inch multi-touch display. So the GTAC DVR installs, we install the cameras, the body camera, we typically put a single dock in the vehicle with the DVR. That body camera works as the wireless mic for the DVR and then it all works together with the wireless triggers. So if we turn the lights on, then the in-car camera system turns on, the body camera starts recording and officer connects at the vehicle, uh, do, their, do their work and then come back. When they stop the recording, the body camera stops recording at the same time. They can categorize everything through our easy to use five inch touchscreen display. And even the video on the body camera is going to get that same category. If they type a case number, they're going to get that case number added to the body camera all in that single step. So it's a fully integrated solution. Our DVR does run a Windows operating system. So as far as a tech perspective for an IT department that's uh, maybe spent a lot of time over the past few years troubleshooting or working on other proprietary DVR systems. Our system is running uh, Windows 10 LTSB. So it is a uh, Windows machine. So it gives you that security and that platform that police department, IT departments are used to supporting. We do have additional options, additional possibilities with the VRX20. So while it can install in a vehicle, we do have the ability to uh, plug it into a cradle point, or we can have it connect directly to Wi-Fi by itself. 
We also have the ability to put a Sierra wireless modem directly into our DVR. So the DVR doesn't get any larger. It still has a POE power injector to power the cameras. It has a backup battery built in. We put that Sierra wireless modem in there and we can actually connect a roof mounted antenna directly to the DVR and have this box be our in-car uh, modem, have it provide internet and upload over that internet. Um, we can go a step further than that as well. I mentioned that this is a Windows uh, product, a Windows DVR. So we have the ability to put an Intel i3 processor in here, or we have the ability, and I won't go through this slide too in depth, we have the ability to beef this up and put in an i7 processor, put in 16 gigs of RAM, and put in a one terabyte hard drive. So GTAC has a heritage of building tough and rugged compute devices. And so with our in-car camera system, whether or not it's being used alongside our body camera, we actually can put a monitor and a keyboard in the vehicle, put that VRX20 in the trunk. And you can see in the photo here to the right, we've got the front facing camera, the five inch touchscreen display. In this example, we have an 11.5 inch monitor mounted to the dash and a keyboard with a smart card reader and RFID built into it. So the GTAC VRX20 in this example is the in-car camera system. It's its own cellular connection provider and it's running full Windows 10. So in this example, we actually have agencies that are running their CAD and their RMS and their Outlook all directly from the DVR. So they're not buying a separate compute device. They say, we need new computers, we need in-car video, let's buy an all-in-one solution. And that's the GTAC Mobile Edge Kit, which you see right here. So by being able to offer that, it allows for a full solution. Um, we have agencies that reach out to us because they're interested in an all-in-one and they want video. They maybe don't have a budget for video, but they've got a budget for computers today and they wanna see how could they possibly make that work. Um, this is a great solution for that. We have a number of customers that run just body cams and a lot of customers that just reach out to us to run the in-car video um, and they still want a separate GTAC laptop or something in the vehicle. Uh, the benefits of this is that by having an all-in-one, there's less components going into the vehicle everything's being ran from that one VRX20. Obviously, it can't come out of the vehicle. So you're gonna lose the ability for officers to take their laptops into an apartment to help write up a report or take notes during an interview. But if you're already leaving your laptops or your tablets locked in your patrol vehicles and they're being hot swapped as shifts start and end, then the VRX20 all-in-one is going to be a very uh, cost-effective and operationally effective way to introduce a new solution throughout an entire fleet. Now, all of this is our hardware. GTAC has a huge heritage of making tough and rugged hardware. Um, what is as equally important, though, is the back-end software that supports video solutions. So, GTAC allows customers to deploy in a cloud environment or customers that have a sufficient IT department or support um, of sufficient size can also deploy GTAC on premise on their own servers. Regardless of which way department deploys our software solution, they're going to have the same experience. Uh, it's going to be a browser based solution. It's called GTAC Enterprise. Um, and <clears throat> I'll go ahead and show that real quick. So our cameras, they create the video out in the field. They're responding to automatic triggers, turning on, starting recording, stop recording, officer categorizes it. They dock it either in the master dock, video uploads to the cloud, or the video uploads directly from the vehicle through Wi-Fi or through cellular. It ends up here in GTAC Enterprise. Now I'm logged in as an administrator, so I can see a ton of information that um, might not be relevant to a standard everyday officer, but from an administrator standpoint, I can see how many assets I have that are currently transferring. This is going to be any video, any photo. This is going to be any type of digital evidence uh, or digital content, typically referring to photos and videos. Um, and this allows me to get a quick snapshot of what's going on in my department. I also have the ability to see unit status. So 
This is just a quick demo site. So it shows that I've got one unit that's actually online. Um, in a fleet, you know, somebody has 100 vehicles and they've got 10 out on the road, it would typically show 10 online. If anybody was actively recording their in-car camera system or their BCO3 is actively recording, it would show capturing and we'd be able to actually see, okay, who's actually capturing video right now and click on that. So you see when I hover over it, it becomes clickable. GTAC Enterprise allows for administrators to get a ton of snapshot information about their agency, such as who's logging into the backend software the most, who's logging in the least, what units are uploading the most video, whether that be a vehicle or whether that be a body camera, um, and to run a number of different reports. All of these come from customers that have asked us over time, how can I do this or how do I look at this information? Um, how do I see an enterprise access log? I need to see every time somebody's logged in to our cloud server. I need to be able to see every time uh, somebody has um, uploaded a file. They just want to be able to see all this data. So we've created a ton of different reports, including custom reports. So we can quickly dive into that. Kind of cool, a little more for tech people or administrators, people that are interested in the data behind a video project. Where most users live when they log into the system, like an officer when they log in, they would be shown immediately this page, which is their assets. It's going to show their most recently uploaded video showing capture date and time. It'll show when that video uploaded and it'll show the lifespan of that video, which is its retention period, how long until that is purged from the system. It's all shown right here in a single pane of glass. Again, for a regular officer, this is typically the page they see as soon as they log in. We can limit everything based on permissions. We fully integrate with Active Directory. So we can make it where an officer who's marked as an officer in your AD is able to uh, log in and only see their own videos. And then piggybacking off of your AD, we can set up a hierarchy that says, well, sergeants are able to see everybody below them, lieutenants are able to see everybody below them, um, and we can create uh, vertical walls between people as well, where we can say people in precinct A are able to see people in precinct A and people in precinct B are only able to see those videos. So it's very customizable of how we are able to uh, give people permissions and visibility here. In fact, when I look at a video and I see the file name, description, device, user station, um, most things that you see on the screen are customizable on whether or not a group of users is able to see it, such as an officer. Now, what I'm gonna do, I just logged in. I'm gonna go ahead and look for a video. Um, I'm gonna go back, I think it was sometime between now and May. I'm gonna click apply. So it's going to search for that. And then I've got a case number, let's just say it included 317. So I'm gonna filter my results. And here it shows me that I've got one video, the case number is 031790. Okay. Um, this is all information that's typed in by an officer out at the vehicle, or this can be accomplished by doing a CAD integration. Uh, so we can actually integrate with a number of different uh, computer to dispatch providers and automatically pull in case numbers, dispositions, uh, users and things like that and assign that directly to a video. So uh, looking at this, I can see that there's an arrow here. This means that there's other videos that are part of this group. So if I click on that, it shows that this is uh, Squad 317's front camera. Uh, this is John McClain's body camera. There's a camera off the right side of the vehicle, a camera off the left side of the vehicle, and then a snapshot that was taken. So I'm able to see all of this right here in a single view. Um, I can click on this and go in and watch the video. When I watch that video, it's going to show me my player. It shows me colored lines representing each video that's part of this grouping. I can even click on this camera views button and I can say, I wanna see all four cameras at once. So this is gonna show me my front facing camera. This is going to show me my body camera and my two side cameras. So I can watch a scene unfold from multiple views. This works when there's multiple cameras in a vehicle or if there's a front dash cam and a body cam. We can also do this with, if there's four body cameras responding to a single, um, 
a single event, we can watch that event from that body camera. We can see the GPS map of where this took place. So I can pull the map along to see where this video took place. I can see that, uh, okay, somebody took a right turn down here. I can actually interface with the video through the map and say, I wanna start watching the video from where the uh, vehicle was about to turn right. So I can click that and you can see it just moved the frames forward over here. We're about to turn right. If I clicked play, then the video is gonna play and the vehicle is about to turn right. So I can actually interface Face with the video through the GPS map, which is really helpful when an officer is re-watching his video and wants to write his report and be really accurate. He's able to find the points that are important. We have the ability to come through here and do a number of things. We can tag videos, we can add bookmarks, so we can say right here like, oh, this is where the guy in the back seat confessed, the word confessions typed right there. We have the ability to annotate and do a number of different things. Um, we also have the ability to categorize, so it's marked as a felony. We could also come in and mark it as another category if we wanted to mark it as um, from a traffic stop to an arrest or from traffic stop to DUI. We'd be able to do that through categories. We also have the ability to email this video, so I can put in um, somebody's email address right here, whether it's a member of the public or whether that is uh, somebody at the district attorney's office. We can put in an email address, choose whether or not they will get the video or video and metadata. Uh, we have the ability to decide if they're able to download it, expiration link, a number of different things, and click send, and they'd receive that. Because all of our devices record GPS, we have the ability to look for other videos that might be relevant by saying, show me every video plus or minus a tenth or a half of a mile plus or minus 15 minutes, and we can click go, and it will show us all relevant assets that meet that criteria. Uh, and every video is kept with an entire history that shows everything that's ever happened to this. This is our audit log. So it shows that even just uh, last week, a week ago today, Brandon Walcott from my team, he viewed this video from this IP address. So I'm able to see that he was able to log in and view that every time I've clicked play or pause, that's recorded. So it's a very secure CGIS compliant digital evidence management solution. Uh, from the assets available page, there's a number of options that we can give people access to. The ability to categorize, to tag it to a case using our cases function, the ability to email, I talked about that, export. If we export it, it leaves the system, it could go to a thumb drive or something like that. Again, that's permissions based, but by doing that, it goes as an MP4. It does not require special software to play it. We can extend the retention period. If we want the video to not be deleted for an extra year, we can lock the video. If it's highly sensitive and we don't want people to be able to see it. Um, number of different things that we can do. Our system includes the ability to uh, redact videos. So we have automatic facial tracking. So we have the ability to come in and say, scan this video and show me every face that's identifiable. And the software will do that. We also have the ability to go in and say export, redact, um, and it brings us quickly to our redaction menu. And I'm able to add timelines and say, I want to be able to blur the video. And it gives me the ability to come in and I can take that box and I can select something and say, let's go ahead and blur this and let's blur it from this point in the video until you know another point. Um, so we're able to blur, do audio muting, all of that, it's built into the software. GTAC does not charge for users. Even though we do Active Directory integration, all of our pricing's tied to the number of body cameras or in-car camera systems an agency purchases. So if an agency needs to purchase 50 in-car systems and 75 body cameras, all of their pricing is going to reflect those numbers. Even if they wanna have 150 users that are able to log in and use this backend software, to be able to support the video project. We don't charge for software access based on users. Every license is tied to how many pieces of hardware an agency has. There's a ton more to this, the ability to manage all of the hardware via the units tab. That's great for an IT person. Um, the ability to look at live video, the ability to do mapping to see where is the fleet right now via our AVL feature. 
We also have the abil ability to do analytics and I'll show that real quick and that'll be the last thing I show and then we'll leave it open for a couple questions. So this is just a quick ability for us to take all that GPS data, say I'm gonna go back to here, I'm going to look at GTAC West, that's the name of my police department, squad 317, that's the only car in my fleet. I'm gonna hit search and then this will actually show everywhere that I have driven the vehicle. So any questions from anyone on the line? Uh, we do have a question in the chat room. So the redaction will work with biometric tech like facial recognition, which is outlawed in California until 2023. Yeah, so um, it is an optional feature, so it does not need to be enabled or accessible for a server. So uh, for agencies that aren't going to use it, it can be disabled, so it can be verified that it's not accessible. Right, thank you. And, and for me, Jay, just you know, from order to delivery, what's a turnaround time for that? So right now, we're actually getting a, a big increase in people using federal grant money to streamline from a physical, anyways, we're getting a, a big demand right now. Uh, so typically from here's your order, um, our turnaround time is six to eight weeks before hardware is on site. And then we begin our white glove deployment where we actually have GTAC personnel on site for officer training, for um, deployment, for configurations and all of that. Awesome, that's great. Well, Jay, I appreciate so much your time in GTAC being part of the demo days today um, as we wrap up uh, our October demo day. Uh, this is being recorded and once we receive the thumbs up from GTAC to share it through our channels, um, we will make sure that's available to you. Um, but again, Jay, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for the great information and, uh, you know, be safe out there, huh? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Bye-bye.